Good morning everyone and welcome back to the Big Oggy Bakehouse. And it is morning, strangely enough, usually, not that you'd know this, but we usually film it in the afternoon. But we're getting a wriggle on this morning because this last week has been National Curry Week. And all week I've been planning on making a curry, but unfortunately John's been really poorly this week, so we've had to sort of wait a bit. So he's much better now and we're going to do this. So our plan is that we're going to make a lamp sander, but to make a authentic Indian curry, you need to have a authentic Indian base curry sauce. So this is sort of like what you would get from say a jar of paste, that type of thing. But this is going to be made from scratch fresh and you can use this base sauce to go into any other Indian type curry. Okay. So um, there's quite a lot of stuff in it. Um, I'm sure it's gonna smell amazing. At the moment, our eyes are stinging because we've got so much onions and garlic and stuff going on here. Um, so let's get on with it and we'll see how we go. Okay, before we carry on, I just wanna chip in because obviously I up doing the onions as well. Um, we've always wanted to do a proper, proper curries. Because curry. yeah. you know, everyone buys the jars and then said, oh, that's a sauce or I already got the takeaway. But it always seems complicated. And I think the reason is because there's so many spices or herbs or yep. whatever. And therefore it also kind of seems expensive. But once you've got them all, you're done. Exactly. And then you can make these time and time again. So actually once, once you've kind of got a store cupboard like we've got, which has got every different spice that you can think of, it'd be daft not to use them. Absolutely. Does that make sense? The only thing that we've had to buy extra this week is ghee because we don't generally have ghee no but you, we've bought it in a jar so it will last and um, it's not used in this part of the recipe but it is used in the second part of the recipe the actual lamby bit so this is going to be two videos we're going to do the base sauce first and then we're going to make the curry after we're going to eat the curry for our tea um so this recipe this amount of ingredients is enough for one base sauce it says but I'm it's used, for a family yeah i'm using a recipe from the greedy gourmet um so apparently you can double up triple up whatever you want and obviously put it stores it in the freezer really well so if you want to make a massive batch and then put it into cartons and put it in your freezer then you'll always have some when you want to make a curry and this takes out a lot of the work when you're putting your curry to to together your actual cook because you've got the base okay so let's go over the ingredients it sounds a lot but trust me okay so to start off with we've got five large onions oh, yeah. sliced five big ones okay we've got a whole globe of garlic yep, a whole bulb yeah peeled we've got about three to four inches of ginger obviously peeled and just chopped this lot is going to go in a blender or you can use a stick blender if you've got one we've got a food processor so, so yeah so it's not really going to matter how big or little your pieces are but obviously try to get it around about the same thickness so that they cook all together really two peppers the recipe says one green one red we couldn't get a green one we're using two reds i'm really sure it doesn't make that much difference two carrots chopped a tin of um chopped tomatoes tinned chopped tomatoes we suggest a good one we've gone for the best we could get yeah um 500 mils of water and then you're going to need a tablespoon of curry powder now i don't like hot curries so this for me it's a fantastic way of doing things because i can control the spice a little bit so i've used a mild curry powder john likes a bit more spice but there is going to be a little bit more spice going in a bit later so but we're using a mild curry powder so a tablespoon of mild curry powder a tablespoon of ground cumin a tablespoon of ground fenug fenugreek a tablespoon of turmeric ground obviously again a tablespoon of smoked paprika and lastly a tablespoon of ground coriander and then you need four tablespoons of vegetable oil so it's pretty simple the measurements because it's all one yeah main spoon for absolutely everything. and obviously if you're going to double it up you'd use two tablespoons exactly. so it's 
simple, simple as, okay? So when you get going on the cooking, to start off with, you need to heat your oil in a large pan. You're gonna need a large pan. There's an awful lot of onion we've there. Gone for a walk. So we've gone for a big walk. Um, heat your oil, cook your onions for five minutes until they start softening. That's the first thing. So I'll come back to you in a second. So we put the onions into the pan and it says to cook them for about five minutes. But if you use electric like me, you'll know that it takes a while for your stove to get hot and to get it going. So I would say cook your onions until they're starting to wilt down. Uh, you will notice, depending on how fresh and juicy your onions are, there's quite a lot of liquid in the bottom, but that's absolutely fine. Don't worry about that. Once you've had your onions sweating down, so they're a bit less bulky, you add your ginger and your garlic and the carrot, and then you leave them again for, it says five minutes, but use your own discretion. You know how well you, your, your oven and things work. So you need to give them a time to get cooking anyway. And then once you've done that, you just add everything else. So the tin of tomatoes, the um, peppers, all of the spices, and then you top it up with water. Now the 500 mils is just a guide because what you want to do is have most of your um, ingredients under water. Um, we had to add a little bit more because our pan is quite deep and quite wide, but obviously you, again, use your own discretion. Once you've got the water in, it will be bubbling away nicely and you literally turn it down to a simmer and leave it for 15 to 20 minutes so that all your vegetables and everything are all nicely cooked through. So here it is bubbling on the stove. So it's looking good now. It looks like curry now. It's smelling like curry now. That's what we hope. So, what's next? Next, you leave it to cook until it's all cooked through. I'm using a lid, you can please yourself. And then you let it cool for just a little while so that it's not boiling hot. And then it goes into your blender or you get your stick blender in there and you blend it to a liquid stroke paste type consistency. So we'll come back and show you ours when we've done it. Okay, so we're done. Basically, we poured our mix into the food processor and we've blitzed it. So um, it comes up like a curry paste, as you can see. I guess it's up to you how far you blitz it. This is perfect for us. We, you know, you don't need it to to be completely liquidy. Um, the one thing I will say, which is, I'm not sure yet, but the recipe for the Lampasanda uses 500 mils of this liquid. Um, we think we've got more. I think, because the recipe said that this was enough for one. This is way more than what you will use for the next part of the recipe. So that's great because we can freeze this and we can use it the next time. So um, if you're interested in a lampasanda, come back in a bit and we'll show you the next stage. But that was the basic Indian curry base mix. I know, it's a strange name. Basic Indian curry base mix yeah never going to get all that on a thumbnail no so we're going to do two videos this week this one today and then in two days time we'll put on the, the how to make lampasander come back soon see you all again make sure you give us a thumbs up do subscribe and if you feel so inclined subscribe to our sister channel big oggy cornwall and big oggy golf and big oggy golf if you like golf or if you just like people or if you just laugh. want to support us yeah, yeah. So, we'll see you all again soon. Bye for now. Bye, everybody.